So at the time of this recording, there's been a lot of chatter about no build in the space of Rails and what that entails and essentially means it entails a lot less for the front end and the app. And kind of interesting to see uh, DHH kind of go on, t on Twitter doing his, you know, typical, it's neat to see that you can now do a lot of this stuff without build steps. But the topic of today that I wanted to cover is bun. Js, and it's the um, I guess an answer to other types of frameworks like Node.js that are uh, I guess our de facto thing we reach for these days when you need a build step or some sort of package to install on in your project use, using JavaScript or TypeScript. Um, a lot of Rails people uh, are not on the the hype train of JavaScript, and that's totally okay. I happen to like it in some cases, but. Um, definitely don't reach for it as, as much as a lot of people do. Um, simple sites and stuff like that, I, I don't feel are a good fit for tons of JavaScript on the front end. You just need it when there's more interactive components. So this is my walkthrough of installing and using Bun on a typical Rails app, just kind of a tour of it. So let me go ahead and create a new app and walk you through that. Real quick before I do though, let's go over what Bun is. Bun is an all-in-one tool for JavaScript and TypeScript apps. It ships as a single executable called Bun. What I would compare it to is uh, NPM or Yarn. Before Yarn existed, I remember reaching for only NPM and that was just full of headaches when you needed to go back to an old app update it to reach standards, suddenly everything changes, then you need to update the app, you spend a full day doing that, it just be it becomes a chore. Um, and it's kind of the same concept here, but we get a lot of speed and um, minimalist stuff with this, I guess you'd call it a framework, or API, whatever you want to call it. Here there's some stats, it's way quicker than NPM and Yarn, which is great. I don't really care how fast it is, just so long as it's like, you know, not riddled with errors or it's simple to integrate or I don't really have to change my frame of thought when I go into front-end development. Um, but from the ground up, it has been described to ease for speed, has support for TypeScript and JSX, which if you use React or something like that, that's going to be an appeal. I use ES Build with Rails typically and I'll probably continue down that path, but um, the default Rails um, package manager of today is Yarn. And that's okay. I've used Yarn forever, but I think Bun might be a good replacement if you can leverage part of the JS Bundling Rails framework and install this on a new app. I'll do that real quick. So we'll say Rails new, and I'll say Bun demo. Uh, I'm going to do just Tailwind because that's what I default to, and then we'll say J Bun, and that's going to assume you're going to use bun on the back end so we've got that option now if you want to install it on a current app you can do so running this script it's basically be a rails task that gets run instead of a actual addition so this will go ahead and actually fetch this gem add it to the framework for us when you create a new app and go to town so when we get this installed, I'll walk you through the configuration that is added. To me, it's similar to ES Build in some regards, so it won't be that big of a stretch if you've come from that world. Um, if you're in the import map mindset, it's, of course, different. I uh, needed to quickly install uh, Node.js as part of a dependency, so um, on a new system, so that's what's happening there. Let me go ahead and install this and see if we get it through the installer this time. Fun demo. I'll open that up and I'm just touring you through this. I'm not going to run any like performance tests or anything. What I want to do is get into the config and show you what that looks like. So we've got some imports and it's going to reach for an entry port that's much similar to ES build if you come from there. So JavaScript controllers uh, application will actually be the main application file where we import Turbo Rails and, and our controllers for Stimulus JS that comes stock. Uh, so that's going to build just like normal to an assets builds directory. And inside here will be where we actually serve our assets in the end. So that's going to be where this outputs to. So it's a simple, here's our config. We've got a source map thing, the entry point, which is going to be app JavaScript application.js, just like we normally have. And the output directory is going to join to a app assets build. So basically any, any files that gets... Um, built will do that. You can see that right here it's an array. So if you wanted to add multiple entry points, you totally could. Um, and then that will build right here. If it's going to build, it's like an async function. So 
if something happens, it can throw an error and, sh and tell you why. And then also it will do a watch step, which is fairly succinct in terms of the logic here. And we can run that as well. So right now we have that running when we boot our server. It's on this proc file, that dev file. And in here we're using Foreman in the background, which has been in the latest version of Rails, Foreman's been a default. So when you boot up the server, which we can do real quick if you want to see, we might get an error. Yeah, Foreman's not found for me. You might need to add Foreman. So Jim, install Foreman. All right, so I installed that. We'll try it again. Bin dev. And you're going to get an unknown command, yarn build uh, CSS watch for me, but also another one, I think, for... Yeah, that, that's actually not the right command anyway. So we need to go back into uh, bun. Actually, bun's going to run the JS. Yarn's going to run the CSS. So I have that installed. If you don't, again, I'm on a brand new system, so I'll see um, code bun. Go with me with the flow on this. Uh, brew install yarn. We'll install that quick. Then we can go back, try that again. Let's see if we get our CSS. Maybe. There we go. Alright, now we've got Tailwind CSS not found. Okay, bear with me here. I think I need to run yarn. And then I need to run bun. So I don't have bun. So anyway, we don't have bun installed yet. So that's the next step. So let's do that. And you can curl it from the install here. So I'll do that. I need to run this. Okay, bun. There we go. We get commands back. Great. So that works. Let me try once more to run our server. All right, now we get some more errors. So this is with the JS bundling package, I've noticed, which is kind of funny, they they have all this like set up to have the config, but you still have to go through and actually install the packages, which is kind of silly, in my opinion. But um, yeah, we could say bun add. It's much like yarn. So I'll say hotwired turbo rails. And there's probably another one I need to install. Tailwind CSS. So bun add. Let's see. I'm going to do this one development. So you can see dash D and then Tailwind CSS. Goes pretty fast, I will say. So there's your kind of test, I guess you could call it. So then we can go once more and say bin dev. And I believe the server will hopefully boot. Oh, we need stimulus now. So I forgot that one. So one more. Bun. So that's one improvement I feel like they could make is maybe when you install that, it just does the additions in that regard. So you can install those packages with bun. So we'll go to localhost 3000 and we're on 712 and Ruby 3.3, which is the latest, which is great. Essentially the usage is just as I showed you, you'd say bun add and then add your packages. The package JSON, so now we have a build step here that goes and runs bun, bunconfig.js. Bun does have like a sophisticated lock file, so it's a bun lock dot, or a dot lock B. I, don't, I think it's just like scrambled text, so you can't even open it. Maybe you can. Yeah, look, just kind of garbage. So that's interesting. Uh, the config file, again, is pretty simple. I think you can extend this to meet your needs, whatever you need to do. Check out the docs for that. Uh, again, I'm I'm no JavaScript guru, but I do my fair share of some JavaScript. I used to use a Vue.js a lot, so this would be kind of something you could reach for with that, or pretty much any node package, depending on what you need. Uh, but it does have some cool support for other languages as needed, so that's great. And I think the real reason most people are hyping about it is the speed. It's a lot faster than everything else, which is cool. So hopefully that was useful. It's very quick. I know I kind of stumbled through it. I apologize, but it was uh, due to my new brand new system that I'm working on. So excited to get going and continuing on with the new features coming to Rails. So I'll see you in the next video.